Low back pain. Why it hurts. In low back pain, every structure in the spine and around the spine can hurt. Low back pain is very common. 80% of the general population will experience low back pain. With only 2-3% to will have sciatica, means the pain is shooting down the leg and the foot. No specific cause of low back pain is identified in the majority of cases. Up to 80% of the time, you will not find a cause for acute low back pain. Low back pain is the primary cause of disability in people younger than 50 years old. So what are the factors that contribute to low back pain? Why is one person hurting more than the other person? What makes you experience low back pain? So what are these factors that contribute to low back pain? Occupation, certain occupations that involve lifting heavy objects and continuous vibrations. Operating certain motor vehicles, prolonged setting, lifestyle and social factors like sedentary lifestyle, lack of fitness, smoking, smoking interfere with the blood supply to the intervertebral disc, which is important in the stability and motion of the spine. Nicotine causes disc degeneration. Depression, obesity, genetics. Low back pain is two types, acute and chronic. The natural history, the treatment, and the prognosis is different for both. Acute low back pain lasts up to 12 weeks. Chronic back pain lasts longer than 12 weeks and can recur. Most of the patients with acute low back pain recover quickly without any residual loss of function. 90% of patients with acute low back pain return to work within 12 weeks, but after 12 weeks of symptoms, their return to work is very slow. The potential painful sources of low back pain will include the intervertebral discs, the facet joints, the vertebrae, the nerves, the muscles, the ligaments. And these are the causes of low back pain. You can have spinal causes and you can have non-spinal causes. So what are the primary causes of low back pain? It can be muscle or ligament strain. It can be disc herniation from an annular tear. Low back pain is known to be caused by disorders of the intervertebral disc. So what is an annular tear? The spine has intervertebral discs between the vertebrae and the disc is made of an inner gelatinous soft part called the nucleus bulbosus which distribute the load that comes across the spine. And there is a strong outer fibrous layer called the annulus fibrosis. The nucleus pulposus have high water content and the high proteoglycan is like a sponge that absorbs the water. In the third decade of life, the nucleus bulbosus gradually will have less water and the concentration of the proteoglycan will decline. When there is a decrease in the water content, for example by age, or decrease of the proteoglycan content that absorbs this water, there will be degeneration of the desk, distortion of its fibers, tears in its lamina, and loss of the disc height. Why does it occur? Because the nucleus bulbosus that usually works as a cushion to distribute the load is now unable 
to distribute the load. So this will lead to more load outside at the periphery, causing tears at the annulus fibrosis. In obesity, all the body weight is transmitted over the gelatinous soft nucleus bulbosus, and that definitely will affect the mechanical behavior, the deformation, the ion transport, and the hydraulic changes inside the nucleus bulbosus. It seems like the hydraulic pressure inside the nucleus bulbosus has to shift when it can bear the weight and the load to the peripheral annulus fibrosis, the strong structure will increase and that can tear the annulus fibrosis and the condition will become painful. The annular tear may cause low back pain even without sciatica or radiculopathy which is pain shooting down the leg because the pain receptors are found on the outer annulus and the posterior longitudinal ligament, which is next to it. The posterolateral corner of the annulus is the most susceptible to tear, usually due to flexion and rotation or torsional stresses. So that annular tear may be the beginning of disc herniation or degeneration. When there is a tear in the annulus, the disc can herniate through the tear. These are the types of herniation. It can be a bulge or protrusion, or it can be extrusion, that the herniated disc is through the annulus fibrosis. Or it can be sequestered, complete displacement with free disc fragment. Most of the time, the patient will have radiculopathy or sciatica with leg pain, which is greater than the back pain. And that leg pain can resolve with time. The pain is worse with sitting, sneezing, coughing, leaning forward. And the pain is less by rest and by lying. The herniated disc may affect the nerve roots. For example, if it is a posterolateral disc herniation between L4 and L5, that will affect the L5 nerve root, and this will cause decreased sensation on the top of the foot. Most common location of disc herniation at L4, L5, and L5-S1. Straight leg raise will be positive. Another cause of low back pain is discogenic pain. There will be disc changes, but not disc herniation. The patient will have more back pain than leg pain. The low back pain can also be due to arthritis of the facet joints, spinal stenosis due to narrowing of the spinal canal, framing, or both, spondylolithesis, which is slipped vertebrae. In general, the patient that you will see in your office is the patient that have a short-term history of activity-related back pain and the management of this pain is usually reassurance, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, physiotherapy. There's no need to get an X-ray or an MRI in the early stages of acute low back pain. There are other causes of low back pain that arises from the spine, such as segmental instability, infection, discitis and osteomyelitis, primary or secondary tumor, multiple myeloma, or the patient may have osteoporosis and the osteoporotic fracture. There might be also inflammatory diseases of the spine, such as ankylosing spondylitis, Reiter's syndrome, rheumatoid arthritis. There are causes from low back pain that arises from the musculoskeletal system such as hip arthritis or hip diseases, sacroiliac joint, and piriformis syndrome.
All these conditions can cause symptoms that mimic low back pain. There are also extra spinal causes of back pain, such as renal stones, urinary tract infection, and pyelonephritis, duodenal ulcer, abdominal or thoracic aneurysm, pelvic inflammatory disease. Understanding of the cause of low back pain at the molecular and genetic level is not that easy. Cytokines such as matrix metalloproteinases and phospholipase A2, nitric oxide, and tumor necrosis factors alpha can contribute to the development of low back pain. These are chemical mediators, drugs, and therapy being developed to modulate the effect of these mediators. There is an evidence that there is increased activity and production of the cytokines. So anti-inflammatory medication may be helpful. Recent research on growth factors and gene therapy appear to be promising. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.